Welcome to the second video of direct bare metal graphic programming. Today we continue with the Verge, which I already prepared here. The S3 Verge being one of the first and infamous 3D deaccelerators. And as in the previous example, we will first do this in an emulator and then in the next episode test all of this in hardware. For this we need the register programming specification which you can also get in PDF form, which I happen to have here. And this specification should tell you all the bits and pieces that you can fill into the graphic card for it to execute commands and perform the acceleration. And as we did already in the previous example, this is no longer done with I.O. ports, not like in the Sound Blaster or Adlib or such, OPL2 and 3 and things like that. This is done with memory mapped I.O. For the S3 Verge, they expanded this a little bit. It's still similar to the S3 Trio, but of course it has 3D and they also happen to change the 2D commands. So thankfully the cursor happens to be fully compatible, but all the 2D stuff apparently not. I have the feeling the old stuff is not there anymore, so it's not compatible. We need to change our commands a little bit. Here's also a block diagram, S3D engine and such. And you write it to the command FIFO, maybe 16 commands or something. And the S3D engine is performing all the actions in. For this we may need to enable this MMIO and also linear addressing. The card may come up with this disabled and also this VESA BIOS is too old, it's not running this in DOSBox but in PCM which is even closer to real hardware or later real hardware. This BIOS is not new enough to support the VESA BIOS extension 2. It's not allowing us direct access to the linear frame buffer what I programmed here instead is that we try to set the mode, like in our previous examples, if setting this bit 14 for linear does fail for unsupported, we try again with all this linear and enable this new style MMO. And you probably have seen the previous example with the S3 Trio. And for the Verge it is slightly different. There are the lines somewhere there. So new does not always mean easier. Ah, 2D. They had here bit BLT and fill first and line here later. So what you need to do for this one is you need to also compute the delta values. And as I write here, the S3D engine draws 2D lines from the bottom up, regardless of the requested draw direction. Figure 15.3 shows four cases, and that is here. So as the engine is always drawing from the bottom to the top, we always need to sort our lines and program the registers accordingly. Also we will later see that it's doing all the 3D operations in this order. This verge programming is slightly easier. It was slightly more fragile to compute the Brazenham line parameters for the trio. Also DOSBox had a bug in the 64-bit build so I spent hours debugging while my line drawing is hanging and causing erratic results and I only much later found out that the emulation actually was buggy. So here as I said draws bottom up, so if the coordinates are top to bottom we simply swap the values. With some, this is by the way our beauty of using a modern GCC, this is actually light white C++, so we have a template for this, just for fun, because we can. Then we have the DX and DY values, just like for the trio, whether it is J major, the start, the direction, the delta, we write this to slightly different registers. For the 3D parts I have already symbolic values. I will later change this also to symbolic values. You see this is X start. They write here it's A974. So A974 you see all those values add up here. This may not be perfect. I need to debug this on real hardware. It works on the emulator. Still need to figure out if this is really needed or not. So we fill all the values. You see very similar. Just that this command structure is also different. Here you see the programming example they give here the end coordinates delta start and here's a command actually this is a second line segment with some auto execute of the second one we can ignore this for now this first bit is actually auto execute so this is the command set and the first bits here mean line and then are some direction bits and so on you see this here the command is 27 bits onwards here and then the ROP operation can do, have here all the Windows GDI bitwise operations. 
mono bit draw, the draw bit is whether to draw it actually, destination format is how many bits, 8, 16, 24 bits, whether to use hardware clipping and so on. Again, in a future step we can make this even more and even easier to use. With this auto execute it is continuing to execute commands each time you write to the highest command address. This one here, they write this here. The highest address here is A97C. It is automatically executing without writing to the command register or any other of these registers. And to disable this you need then at the end you need to write a no, no operation command with this auto execute bit disabled again. Let me show this example. As I mentioned before, for this we use PCM because it has S3 Verge emulation. I did not know about this actually until a YouTube comment earlier last month. And it's a total awesome emulator, I have to say. Of course the boot time is slightly longer than just calling DOSBox. And this is our S3 Verge example with our same line circle there. Like in the previous video, this is just uninitialized video memory. So the circle and hardware cursor and this works awesomely too. Next we also want rectangle fill. You see just the same again, this values, this command, just like for the verge it's slightly different layout here. And also what else I write screen to screen copy. Bit BLT, color pattern, screen, color pixels. For this you also would need to determine in which direction to copy. I'm not doing this yet, it's travel to add however. So we need to look here for screen to screen copy. Some are also other kind of bit BLTs, bit transfers. Bit BLT, bit here. So this bit BLT has another command register. This command is in a higher address range. So we fill this kind of register values here. By the way, unlike the trio, as far as I've seen, only work with the current screen dimensions. This one here takes a stride. You could also generate images that are smaller than the current screen, um, like smaller uh, application windows that, that do not fill the entire screen and change the stride accordingly to this. And then width and height, just like you see here, A504, width and height. You see here, width and height. And destination, source and destination, 508 and 50C. And the command, zero is bit BLT, the raster operation, rectangle fill, and again, just the same pattern, very easy. And let's show this to you. Fill blip. So, and again, the expected result our line circle, our filled rectangle, and everything copied over there. Last but not least, Bare Metal 3D programming for my fun and your education. So the S3D engine isolates the drawing of 3D lines, not implemented in PC emulator, and triangles, texturing of 3D triangles, fogging and alpha blending of both 3D lines and triangles. However, here the right programming code is quite complex for 3D operations and will be provided by S3 to customers desired to create custom drivers, which as you can determine by the sentence is already why 16 year olds have not gotten this to work on a 386. 3D lines are implemented but have not yet tested as missing in PC emulator. And we continue with 3D triangles. And as is written here, the triangle is always rendered from bottom to top, starting at the first scan line at or above the starting bottom vertex and ending at the scan line at or below the ending top vertex. The location of the 0, 2 side, largest Y dimension, determines the horizontal rendering direction. As many as 43 registers may be required to completely specify the rendering of one 3D triangle with texturing applied. And then they don't really show much here except listing some registers and having this graphic and continuing with the register listing and that's it. So everything I had to figure out myself. And also for this generation of cards you need to compute the projection yourself. So if you have your 3D model like this book with X, Y and Z coordinates you still need to have a software engine matrix multiplying those points and projecting them as you wish to a 2D plane, like the screen, for the S3D engine to actually fill this triangle with a shaded color or texture. So all those points, I spare you the details a little bit, it took me quite some hours to figure out and debug and get working. And they also don't specify it here much further, so 
I was reading the actual specification for things like this, will we find it immediately? But this is a simple one, scanline count. Um, there are also others, delta registers for colors and such. So first we do the sorting, sort here by way coordinates, swap the coordinates and colors accordingly as we need to draw bottom up. Then we need to determine whether we draw left or right. I do this by intersecting here at the point one, the scan line, and check whether the line intersects on the left or right side. That is here. X direction by intersecting point at Y1. You see I compute here quite some delta values that we need for the programming of the engine. Also we exit immediately if the deltas are zero and we don't have anything to draw. This would cause an divide by zero exception. As we do this with color filling, we need to compute here color delta values in the direction we want to fill. As you will see in a second, this may not yet be 100% accurate. Basically, we take the red, green and blue values from our pixel, compute the deltas. However, this is over-specified. The engine cannot draw this because this is likely meant to be used differently. I have your specification for the color points at 0, 1 and 2 and the engine cannot do this. The engine can only do color change in x and y directions. So in this example, I specify this point red, green and blue or something like that. And you will see that this will not happen in the emulated example, in the emulated rendering. We will get there some flickering artifacts. This is likely because of this color gradients I compute are not containing all the information and also not specify this kind of combination because this is meant for ground shading. So I will likely later adjust this example when I advance to implementing texturing. I'm also not yet using set buffering, so the set buffering is zero. Um, in a real world example, we would later use set buffering. Set buffering is storing in a different memory region where we have drawn already something with what depth, so things are not painted again that are hidden. But for this simple example, we don't enable this, but it should just work if you enable it, as far as I think. And so the stride and then the various values, the uh, delta values for delta x and y directions for the side 1, 2, the x end coordinate for the point 1, 2, and so on. Some things may not yet be 100% precise. I may refine some of these values in the future, but this already works. The start coordinates and the scan line counts for the point 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. Then the command bits, 0 is ground shaded triangle, some things like texture wrapping, set buffering, which we are not using right now. Set buffer update, compare, alpha blending. Alpha blending, by the way, I think works. I once enabled it, it looked okay. Fogging, for some things you would need to specify some more things, like for fogging. You can also not combine alpha blending and fogging in this hardware. Texture filtering, but we are not using texturing right now. Again, whether to draw it, whether to use hardware clipping, and whether to auto-execute it. And then the command, did bit 27, and all the other bits at the various places. And then we draw a test triangle at the coordinates 100, 100 to 250 and 150, 0. A little bit similar to what the standard drawing looked like there. So S3 verge. You can see a triangle that unfortunately we have overdrawn with this filled rectangle. Oops, let me trust this. I need to copy this executable always in the loopback mounted DOS disk image here. And here's our triangle, starting with red, going towards blue and towards green. However, as I said, this is imprecise as we cannot specify the delta values as I specified them there in the API. So I will in the future change the API. Why are these color specifications so strange? Hmm. Whatever. I also draw small test marks there for the points for me to check. To do something more fancy and test all combinations, let's rotate it. For this, we hook up into the timer interrupt. Here, uh, IRQ1C, that is by default, usually should run at 18.2 times a second. And at this timer interrupt, we simply increment a tick variable here. As you have seen in my earlier examples of this programming. And then here in our loop where we sleep until an interrupt and check for the mouse, for the line test drawing there, if we have a new tick, we update the text that you have already seen counting up and for the verge fill the area black and then render a new triangle rotated by ticks degree. 
So let's do that. And as you can see, it is for the most part nicely rotated, except that the color is flickering and I think my coordinate swapping should be okay. However, I think this is due to our over specification and color values that we can't program. So we compute data values that do not match with what we actually wanted. Or additionally, it could also be an emulator bug. We will see another day when we try this on real hardware. I hope you enjoy my in depth programming series. Again, not only for games and demos, also for working and writing on state of the art hardware 3D graphic drivers for Linux or BSD or such for modern cards, just that they are more complex. But this should get you started with all the basics. And next, we will also continue implementing texturing and trying this on real hardware and maybe eventually draw some more sophisticated examples. As usual, it would be welcome if you share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.